Hi everyone. Tragically and rather unfairly, I don't have a time machine. But if I did and could go back to talk to myself before I was published, these are the five things I'd tell myself. Okay, so the first thing I think I'd tell myself is to enjoy it. I think I did enjoy writing before I go to sleep. I did enjoy writing before I go to sleep. But I suppose I didn't really realise what a unique experience writing a debut novel is because there are no expectations. You just have freedom. That's scary, I suppose, because along with having that freedom, you also, I suppose, don't have that level of support that you get when you have got editors and uh, agents and other people involved like that. But um, it is very freeing to be able to write with no real eye on the market at all, or no real eye on the publishing industry, because you don't really know very much about the publishing industry. It's kind of a mysterious something else. So yes, yeah, so that's the first thing I'll go back and tell myself, is just uh, enjoy this moment, because um, it's, it's certainly a different experience for writing a book once you're published. But then number two, I think, sounds kind of contradictory to that, as well as enjoying yourself, take it seriously. Um, my writing really improved when I started taking it seriously. My writing really improved when I realised that nobody was going to call me a writer. Nobody was going to tell me I'd got the right to call myself a writer. I had to make that decision myself. And when I did start calling myself a writer and I did start taking it seriously, things, things did improve. My writing improved. My, my focus improved. My determination improved. Everything just kind of stepped up a notch. So yeah, so as well as enjoying it, I'd also say take it seriously. Uh, sooner. And then the third thing kind of leads on from that. I think in order to take it seriously, I would tell myself it's really important to create the right environment for the work. I think it's really important to sit down and think about what, if anything, is stopping you from doing the work or, or what is making the work more difficult and trying to make the right changes to, to get rid of those things or to at least to ameliorate the effects that they're having. Um, it is important. It isn't easy. It's not just going to happen in the 15 minutes between finishing your dinner and watching EastEnders or whatever. You know, you have to create the right environment, create the world that will allow the work to happen. And that might mean isolating yourself for a while. Um, you know, it might mean uh, putting a lock on the study door, building a shed that you can, you know, <laughs> go and sit in and work, whatever it might be, whatever specific situation you're facing, I think it's really important to to create the world that allows the work to happen. Um, which for me was very much tied in with taking it seriously. Because when I started to take it seriously, then I also started to create that world, to make, to make time for myself um, and to attach an importance to that time. I kept it sacred. It wasn't something which, uh, could be stolen by somebody who was inviting me to a party or a barbecue or something. Not that that happened that often, but uh, so that would be the next thing I would tell myself. And then the next thing is I'd go back and remind myself of the difference between being a writer and being an author, because being a writer is really what the job is, putting the words on the page, creating the stories, creating the worlds. The real work is done alone, at a desk usually, uh, surrounded by imaginary people. Um, and everything else that goes with it, the job of being an author, the book festivals, the signings, um, the interviews, yeah, they can be tremendous fun. It can be such a relief to do those things uh, when you've spent so long by yourself in an empty room. But they're not the job. Um, and I think it's really important to remind yourself of that. And I think it would have been really something that I should have learnt, could have learnt earlier. And then the final thing that I really wish I could go back and tell myself is don't read reviews. Do not read reviews. Um, especially reviews, no, actually all reviews. Yeah. I think it's very natural to want to read reviews. And I think especially before I go to sleep, I read for ages, I was reading pretty much every review I could get my hands on, including those on 
Amazon and Goodreads and so on. Because, um, you know, you've written this thing and it's out there in the world and you're interested and you want to know what people think of it. Um, but then it can only really do damage to your confidence, I think, in many ways. Because you're not going to get a clean sweep of great reviews. And there is something... I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a sign of pessimism or negativity because it seems to be pretty universal for every writer that I've spoken to about this kind of thing. But the one line in a review that's negative, you may have a glowing review, but the one line that's negative is the one that will feel realist, is the one that will get under your skin. So, you know, you can have 95%, oh my God, this is brilliant, it's changed my life. How, how has he done this? It's the most wonderful thing I've ever re ever read. But if at the end it sort of says, I didn't really like this though didn't really like the way that chapter ended or I didn't really like this character or he's misspelt something on page 42. That's the thing that you focus on. So it can only really distract you, I think. Um, and, you know, I think it's really important when you're writing to not have other people's voices in your head, especially for a first draft, not to have other people's voices in your head. And it just is incredibly difficult to keep those voices quiet when you've got, you know, A running commentary of people's reviews just whir whirling around telling you that you're rubbish or that you overuse the word plinth or whatever so yeah so don't read reviews would be my final piece of advice to myself so yes yeah, so that's what i would do if i had a time machine as well as well no let's keep things positive there'd be other stuff too but maybe that's for a different video Bye bye